Grand rising beautiful humans and welcome to Rising Minds, where our intention is clear. We want to share valuable information for transformation designed to raise your consciousness to a whole new level of mind. I'm your host, Sam Dagash, aka The Mind Alchemist. All right, guys, or shall I say all is well. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. I really appreciate you being here and open to always receiving information that will elevate some part of you, some part of your day, maybe week, maybe month, maybe a part of your life. And that's my intention, always to share information that will come create some form of transformation in your life. And I wanted to share with you guys something that has been, you know, I, uh, more evident in the last couple of weeks through my experiences and some of the close people in my life as well. And it's about how do we preserve our happiness and how do we make sure that we are, you know, in a state of content versus a state of disappointment. And what I'm about to share with you guys is a really simple yet very effective way of protecting yourself from finding that sense of disappointment or sense of being unhappy because of a certain outcomes or certain things that happen to us in our life. And one of the key areas is around setting expectation, right? So what I mean by that is a lot of the time, unconsciously, we set expectation from certain circumstances or outcomes or people in our life where we expect things to happen a certain way. And it's not like we sit there and go, this is going to happen. No, it's an unconscious process. And usually that unconscious process is happening because of our own projection, our own thoughts, our own beliefs. And what happens is we start to set expectations on others. And when we set those expectations and when they're not met, immediately we have disappointment, unhappiness, right? So the simple way of looking at it is, okay, so I don't want to be disappointed. I don't want to be unhappy. Um, so how do I protect myself? Well, the simple way of, of, of stating this is do not set expectation. Do not set expectation on others. And I, and I don't want to sound like being pessimistic here. No, no, no. I'm saying this in a manner to protect yourself and, 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 and hear me out here. What do I mean by that? It's like, the moment we have an expectation of someone to show up for us in our life a certain way, because this is how we would perceive ourselves showing up for them or for the circumstance or for the experience or whatever that is. And when those expectations aren't met, there's an immediate, immediate response of disappointment. There's immediate response of regret, upset, unhappiness, whatever that is, right? So the idea here is, okay, so how do I manage that better? Is you don't set any expectation. But by not setting expectation, it doesn't mean you're expecting the worst. <clears throat> you're just not expecting anything. And when that person shows up for you in their life, in your life, being it a circumstance or an experience or a result, then it's a, then, then it's a, it's a really a happy moment. It's a, it's a, re, it's a, it's a bonus, right? There's an emotional there's an emotional, good emotional response and good impact uh, in our life. But if we have a constant expectation for someone to show up for, for us, um, and it does two things. Number one, it strains the relationship because now there is an almost unconscious process that you need to show up for me to show me that you love me, that you accept me, that I am whatever that is. And if that person doesn't show up for whatever reason, being it they they are just the per that they are just the, the identity or personality that is just doesn't show up for people doesn't show up, and when I say show up, I mean is not meeting the expectation, right? It's not meeting the the, the unconscious process of you supposed to meet me. The, I'm doing this for you. You're supposed to have that respect or whatever that is in any area of life. By the way, it doesn't have to be individualized, right? 
but understanding that when we have no expectation on others, we take back our control and we focus on ourselves, of what we can bring to the table, of how we can show up for ourselves in our, in our life. And more importantly, anything that comes with that is now, a, 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 you know, a, a, a protection. Because now if someone disappoints you, or should I say the disappointment won't even be there in the first place because there's no expectation. So let's use this as an example. Let's say I am going to, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm uh, going to a gathering or I am experiencing, you know, I'm, I'm invited somewhere or I'm going to going with a gathering. And now in that experience, I'm expecting people to show respect or show love or show appreciation or show something that's in my expectation, right? It's automatically there. And I have this in my mind. I've played this theme in my mind. It's going to go this way and that way and this and that. And when that is not met, there's an immediate disappointment. But if you go into an experience where you're expecting neutrality, you're not expecting anything because you don't need any, any, anything from anyone. You're going in there just for you to show up for yourself in that experience, um, being it in relationships, intimate relationships, or others there is a sense of control. There's a sense of um, more power. And what happens then is that you allow things to unfold the way it's supposed to, and then that's the feedback you start to take action upon. So what I'm saying is if you go into an experience and people aren't showing up for, that for you, meaning they're not, they're not fully present, they're not treating you the way you want to be treated, being at relationships, friendships, whatever that is, what happens there is that you're now seeing it for what it is, and there's no disappointment. There's only simple clarity. There's no frustration. There's just clarity. And now you go, okay, now I act accordingly. So if it's an, it becomes an energy exchange. It becomes a, a, you know, a sort of, a sort of pl equal playground. I, I show up, and if you're showing up for me, then I'm going to continue showing up for you. Then I'm going to continue, you know, um, giving you my energy, giving you my focus, giving you my attention, giving you my respect, my love, my appreciation, whatever that is, right? It, again, I'm, I'm, I'm being very broad here, but it could be in any context of life, right? It could be work relationships. It could be personal relationships. It could be uh, friendships. It could be business relationships, whatever that is. So it's important that there's always a common place of, of, of an energy exchange, but without the expectation from the other person. It does two things here. Number one, less pressure on the other person to do something that they're not actually meant to be doing. Because what you want to do is you want to see people for who they truly are. You don't want to have an expectation and you let them feel that you're supposed to do this and that for me, and that's not happening authentically. Then you're, not, then you're, then you're forcing it, right? So what you want to do is you want to come into a space of neutrality you're not expecting anything, but that not expecting anything doesn't mean, again, I'm repeating myself, it doesn't mean that you're expecting worst out of the, out of the people or out of the experience, or it doesn't mean you're expecting, it's nothing, it's neutral. So when they show up and they start to deal with you in the manner that is m mutual to how you are showing up for them, great. If not, then that is a, a gift in its own, right? It's a gift because now you're able to see it for what it is without the disappointment, without the disappointment and without, uh, uh, you know, without the frustration, anger, whatever that is, right? So understanding that that helps you control your reaction, which is very good because the importance of focusing on what you can control, your response and attitude is more important than focusing on what they didn't do and how they didn't show up and what... It, that, that's, that's, that's irrelevant because that's out of your control. So how do we approach that? We approach it from a place of neutrality. We approach it from a place of, I will give my energy and attention and love and respect and whatever that is, and depending on the relationship, subjective to how that person or individual or experience is coming to me. The moment we set expectation, two things happen. Number one, we're setting ourselves up for disappointment 
And sometimes, more often than not, beyond the world of the scene, we also have an energetic resistance that's going out. So we're putting a, we're forcing it. We're, 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 we're creating a resistance. We're, we're wanting something that's not showing up for us, and we're trying to make it happen. And we're, we start to, we start to change who we are to get that outcome, to get them to show up, to get them to, to be present, to get them to whatever that is, right? So, so these are beautiful, powerful learnings that has recently come into my space of awareness. Um, and, 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 you know, we're always evolving, we're always growing and we're always learning. And that's really powerful. Like, you know, we're always learning, right? So, so, so my message again to you is, is understanding where do I have expectations in my life from others that is often not being met, that is often making me feel disappointed, angry, frustrated, because now you're giving your power away. And my idea is how do I bring more happiness how do I bring more content in my life? Well, the name of the game is no expectation. The name of the game is neutrality, showing up for myself, focusing on what I can control, and then taking action based on that experience. Because when you enter it in a neutral way, your energy is balanced. You're not expecting, there's no disappointment. Because when you get disappointment, think about it, you act differently. When you get disappointment or frustrated, you act, you become a different person. And that's not who you truly are. You want to be always neutral. And if those people don't show up, great. That's clarity. That's evidence. That's um, feedback. And now you can act accordingly. And if they do show up and they, you know, match your energy, match your um, energy exchange and the respect that you are worthy of, then great, that is a bonus. So disappointment always, if not most of the time, I don't say always because it's not always, but I would say most of the time disappointment happens when there is an expectation from something outside of us that's not being met. And I think there are some practical steps to avoid that, you know, number one, as I mentioned, self-awareness, recognize when you're setting expectations and why, right? And number two is to just practice that, that mindfulness to stay present and avoid projecting future outcomes. You know, it's, it's important to try and not project future outcomes in the context that might lead to disappointment, right? So it's good to have positive future projections, but not tying it emotionally. So it's like, oh my God, now nah, if, if it, it's going to be this, 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 that, and, and you, you know, and then it doesn't, then it's, there's this appointment, right? So neutrality, I, I, I anticipate the best. I anticipate the best from people, from situations and experiences, but I'm not expecting it. I expect to be treated well. I expect to have good experiences. That's your expectation within your boundaries that you can control. So Clearly communicate your needs and boundaries without expecting others to meet them, if that makes sense. So you always have to know what's your needs, what's your boundaries, what's important to you, but without expecting others to meet them, because then you are in control of your own, if that makes sense. And then the acceptance, I would say. So acceptance is learning to accept people and situations as they are without trying to change them. And that's a lot of the time what tends to happen. We try and change outcomes. We try and change people. We try and change things. And that really takes a lot of energy. And, it, and, it, and, it, and again, leads to more disappointment because it's something that is more often out of our control. And that is something that we need to be aware of, right? So accepting people for who they are and the situations as they are, so we see it through a neutral lens, and then we can learn from that experience. And I always, always say this, you know, focusing on what you are grateful for rather than what you feel is missing is super important. Like that is like the, 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 the medicine, right? Gratitude is the, is the attitude. It's the medicine. So being grateful for you being able to show up for yourself is important. Being grateful to be able to be, to, to, to know that, you know, all that, that, is, that is happening for you is happening for a reason to give you more clarity, more awareness, 
more learning, more growth, right? These are really, really, really important. So I hope you're making notes here. <laughs> so my message here and my intention here with this podcast is, is protecting your emotional well-being. Ultimately, that's what I'm trying to say. You know, that's what I'm, what I'm trying to deliver. So it's important to understand that there are frameworks around that, that you have to, you know, surround yourself with the people that are showing up for themselves first and foremost, then for you. Because if someone's not showing up for themselves, how can you expect them to show up for you? Right? It's very, very important. Like a lot of people have those expectations, like they should be doing this, they should be saying this, they should be seeing this. And, you know, that's, that's out of our control. Like that is their world, that is their reality, that is their projection, that is their identity. We can only see it for what it is, you know, and that's super, super important. So guys, just to break this down one more time, the most important thing for us to feel and to sustain our happiness, to sustain our sense of well-being, emotional well-being, um, is, and it really it's a, plays a massive factor in our life, is, is no expectation. No expectation. But I want to make sure I'm very clear here, because a lot of times there are people misunderstand that. No expectations mean I'm expecting the worst. No, no, no. I'm not saying that. I mean, no expectations. You're not expecting the worst, and you're not expecting the greatest. You're just not expecting anything. You're just expecting to focus on your self-awareness, your communication, your gratitude, your acceptance for what is in the neutral world, in the neutral space, that's going to protect your emotional well-being, right? So to cultivate a mindset free from expectations, this is the practice that I'm encouraging you to do, to increase that self-awareness and that emotional intelligence, to strengthen your relationships through acceptance and open communication, right? So you're being clear and have those boundaries. So guys, remember, the key to happiness is not setting expectation but embracing the reality for each moment, right? For each moment, you know? And then based on that, we act accordingly, okay? So guys, one more time to wrap this up. Remember that setting no expectation can help you avoid disappointment and can lead a more fulfilling life. So practice neutrality and focus on what you can control. This is super, super important. So guys, I, I, I'd love to hear your experiences and feedback on this topic. You know, feel free to DM me, message me, see if this is something that you can practically apply in your life and how simple yet so super, super, super effective that it's going to make you feel so much more empowered, so much more aligned, so much more uh, in control of your emotional well-being. So wanted to wrap this up by saying thank you so much again for taking the time to listen to this podcast. Much love and positive energy.